the early 50s, yeah. uh, uh, playing with uh, various people, uh, Tristano, basically. Mm. And uh, on this, uh, which is the last, next to last date of a two and a half week tour with Paul and Steve Swallow, uh, I'm having the, the chance to, to play in a very comfortable situation for me uh, with, with the trio without uh, chord, a chordal accompaniment, which uh, sometimes I prefer. Uh, uh, I enjoy playing with great chordal players. It's like playing with an orchestra, but it gives another perspective on the music for me. I, I either have to not listen or else I have to uh, really uh, take a breath and take time to uh, hear what sound is being made and trying to relate to that sound, because I don't know what that sound will be. Even though it's an F minor 7th for the first chord of all the things you are, a piano player or a guitar player could play any chord that he wanted to there, and I could either just skim over it and get away with it, or I could actually, in some way, without being able to, I'm unable to identify at the moment, this is a G flat, flat five, uh, flat nine chord, and pick out the appropriate scale or something to play on that. I just listen and try to pick out something to relate to it. <clears throat> uh, without the chordal instrument, all I have to relate to is the lovely rhythms that Paul plays. He's a very, very sensitive player, really listens closely to what's going on. And Steve, who is a great bass player and is playing the electric ba bass, which wasn't my favorite instrument. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, enjoying it very much because he plays it very well. Uh, that, I think that's the difference. Uh, whatever the instrument, if it's played very well, you find a way to relate to it. Uh, we were speaking about Sonny Dallas before, uh, who made the record with Alvin Jones. After I heard the new release, uh, uh, there were an extra two CDs released, a, a three CD set for, on Verve. I, I was playing a date at the knitting factory in New York and I called Sonny from Europe and asked him to make it. And he said, you know, I don't play upright bass anymore. I, don't say, I said, I don't care what you play. I like your feeling for the pulse. Yeah. Well, I didn't really love the way he played. I mean, he played it well, but I, I missed the sound of the upright bass, the the real uh, bass sound. I think there's something about uh, acoustic instruments that have that that natural feel, that resonance, you know? But, that uh, the electric bass has a clarity that very rarely... Only with really great players has... Yeah, like Steve has, has, has a, right. a completely different sound. You can hear every note, and that's a pleasure to be able to do that. I've had, a, a just personally, a problem because of the register of my instrument, maybe, to be able to really catch all of the notes that are played in a, a quarter-note uh, bass function... Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, try to figure out how to be in tune with that and how to, you know, like hear and go in the direction that that bass line... Ultimately, that's our task, yeah. to hear what people are doing and relate in some way and not uh, just uh, bypass it, uh, float over the top of it. And boy, if that's not an impossible task, it's next to impossible for me. Right. But when you think about such a project you know that was that you made in 1961 and you hear that record it still has that freshness especially now it's been released with all the alternate takes and the rehearsal tapes um you you really get the 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 feeling that you know there's three musicians who are really listening to each other that's with alvin jones and sonny dallas uh, we were thrown together for a recording session and had never played together this is one of the magical things that's possible to happen. Uh, I'm not uh, putting any value judgment on the quality of this music, but a lot of people have heard this and liked it. And 
uh, now that they've released two more, I think to myself, here's three CDs of me playing, basically me playing with bass and drums. And I took the liberty, if you'll forgive me, I'll confess this right now, not comparing in a sense, but uh, uh, Bach's cello suites are some of my favorite music that I listen to practically every day. And I began to think that in a way, this might be my contribution to uh, that kind of uh, uh, melodic music. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I said that right, because I don't want to compare it to Bach. Thank you. 
Thank you. That was called Thingin'. That's a, a dedication to Jerome Kern, a figure that I wrote uh, on All the Things You Are. Next, uh, we'll play Darn That Dream. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. This next tune is written by Steve, and it's called Ladies Waiters. Thank you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Thank you very much. This next tune is a dedication uh, from Paul to uh, Jim Pepper. Uh, it's a tune called Johnny Broken Wing. <laughs>
For our last tune uh, this evening, uh, we'll play a tune of Steve's called Eider Down. <clears throat> Thank you for listening. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Swallow and Paul Motion.
Thank you. 